This morning's Coffee With is with David Hildebrand. And Elizabeth Schaff. This is awesome. David, Elizabeth, welcome to WJZ. Good morning. How are you? Excellent, thank you. Musical Maryland, the history of song and performance from the colonial period to the age of radio. Hmm. And Maryland has this incredible history. This is almost like a textbook. Mm -hmm. How long did you two work on this? Well, I was two when we started. Nice, very <laughs> good. So the past 16 years, you think. <laughs> what a deal. It's been a long time. I mean, mm -hmm. did, 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 did this happen over the course of many years, a project you'd put down, you'd pick up, or was it just full steam ahead? Well, Fiora Contino, who was a conductor at Peabody some years ago, said that trying to do history in Maryland is like trying to plow a rocky field. And, well, starting the archives helped do this, and now this is harvest, and we hope it will introduce everyone to the wonderful men and women and groups that made Maryland mus musical. Well, and it, and it did. I mean, you know, you could, you could roll out Yibby <coughs> Blake, and standing on the same platform would be performers from revolutionary times in Annapolis. Indeed. And my favorite person, too, that I had the pleasure of knowing, the Peabody, the Porgy and Bess, the original Bess, who is responsible for the name Porgy and Bess, was from Baltimore. Come on. And she lived just a few, few blocks from me. She grew up in Baltimore, went to Juilliard, went to see Gershwin, and sang for him. And he said, you know, there's Tristan and Isolde. We're going to have Porgy and Bess. Is, um, so is the book full of things like that? Absolutely. Francis Scott Key mm -hmm. from my hometown of Annapolis, or from Frederick, excuse me, but who uh, was educated at St. John's College. Um, there's lots about him, the story of his parody of an old English drinking song, and all of that stuff is in there. Uh, songs, actually the very cover is based on a song about steamboats on the Chesapeake, sailing out of Baltimore over to Tolchester and places like that. Okay, so we, we, we cover colonial times, but this comes all the way to about what year? About 1950, 60, right in there mm -hmm. as the age of radio was, was transitioning into the age of television. Okay, I'll give you the age of radio and how this plays into it. There was a radio station for years, WFBR, mm -hmm. 1300, which is now WJC AM. But there are studios down off of North Avenue. Besides having the control room where legendary disc jockeys performed, they were, there was a studio, a theater studio, and live performance on radio in Baltimore. A lot of those performers made it up like crazy from the Baltimore Symphony Orchestra. And they played it with a BSO and then ran up to the radio stations. You know, some of them had their own orchestras. That is just, yeah. that is wild. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. in Elizabeth's part of the book. We sort of split, I cover from the very beginnings, from St. Mary's City up through the colonial, revolutionary, federal periods, War of 1812, Civil War, and Elizabeth picks up Pretty much as George Peabody's legacy starts to take shape uh, so you did like uh, in half the and 1860s. Half. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she takes the, the, sec the next half. And we're going to do a web extra, by the way, because mm -hmm. five minutes is a short period of time. We only have like one minute left, but there's great pictures of uh, uh, prints. Uh, there's, there, it, it, it's an easy read. It's a good typeface. In this color plate section, a bunch of nice sheet covers there about in the middle. I mean, this is Beautiful. really... Yeah. So this, in, in, the, in the 45 seconds we have left, <laughs> what got you interested in this, the short story? Um, Bob Brueger, the editor at Hopkins Press, said I had to do it. There you <laughs> go. Forced. Yep. Bob went in his office, did it, and, and it brought us together at Peabody. Uh, mm -hmm. You were at the archives. I was starting to teach there, and has still am. You know, one of the greatest moments I've, I've had in my career was a great conversation with Liberace backstage at Pier Six before he went on. I was introducing the show, oh, that's why. and his orchestra was playing. He, we had about 15, 20 minutes to kill. And he was telling me all about remembering Baltimore and his mm. days at the Peabody mm. and how important it was and mm. is yeah. to American music. Mm. Liberace gave me an education wow. on the Peabody. Yeah, that's wow. That's wonderful. Yeah. And talked about yeah. people that he had looked up to. Listen, hold this guitar up for a second. You see this? This is a guitar that would have been played 
in the 1700s? Yeah. Stunning. We're going we're to take a break. When we come back, we'll continue the show. We want you to join us at cbsbaltimore.com, and you're going to hear some tremendous music come out of this guitar. Yeah. Well done. Well done indeed. Musical. Oh, by the way, you've got a. Oh, uh, you have an event coming up. Oh, yes. This is tomorrow. Friday the 15th. Tomorrow. Yeah. Frederick, Maryland, Frederick. All Saints Church on Church Street. Yes, yeah, so a what concert. Time? 7 p.m. 7 p.m. 7 p.m. Say it again. again. All Saints Church in Frederick, Maryland at yeah. 7 p.m. Special weekend program actually beginning Friday night. Wonderful. Yeah. Out of sight. Yeah. Hey, listen, thanks, me. Yeah. David Elizabeth, you're awesome. Thank you. Delightful. Yeah. Join us online, folks. CBSBaltimore.com.